God add more years to your relationship. I told you I have seven prayers for you. Seven short and simple prayers for you. I'm going to give it to you regarding the month of May. Number one, number one. May your finances multiply exceedingly abundantly. Above all, you can think, dream, ask, or imagine. Number two. May your health provide long life for you. With long life, will God satisfy you and show you his salvation. <laughs> Number three, will your friends not be jealous of you? Number four, will your families love on you? Number five, may your pain diminish. Number six, will your worrying subside? And number seven, it's not even a prayer. <laughs> Um, this is a scripture out of Psalm because it has the word may in it because uh, somebody you're going through something right now but I promise you things are getting ready to turn around for you how do you know preacher weeping may endure for a night but joy is going to come on this Sunday morning God bless you I love you come on Reverend we're going to go and praise and worship bless you love you
season. God is working in your favor. Don't you worry. Don't you fret. God is with you now and forever. Just trust him. Just believe him. He's making a way out of no way, even behind the scenes. Come on. Yeah. Father, we thank you. As we come into the Holy of Holies, we trust you, we believe in you, Lord God, and all that you said in your word. And Father, we come and we open our hearts to you, Lord God, and we turn from sin, we turn to you, and we confess it, Lord God, we see no way, according to your word, Father, you said you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we're here to come into the Holy of Holies, Holy Communion, Father, what your Son, Jesus, did for us. Thank you, Father. We know, Lord God, this is our point of contact. Knowing what you did, we say thank you. We ask your blessing upon this bread and upon this cup. From a natural to spiritual, in the precious name of Jesus. I pray all who agree said amen. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm I'm praying to God. This morning I'm praying to God and about the situation that we're going through and and then I hear that the doctors, the scientists, they're looking for a vaccine for this coronavirus. And God spoke to my heart. He said, you got it. We have it. The communion is the vaccine. The body, the blood of Jesus. This is the vaccine they've been looking for. There's healing. Jesus hung bread and died, got up on that Thursday morning for us, took all, it all, took all the sickness. He saw this day before it came. All we need to do is trust him and have faith that this is it. So as we partake, we know that the body of Jesus never sick, never pain until he got on that cross and took it all. All of our pain, all of our suffering, all of our, all of the coronavirus, he took it on the cross for us. He gave us perfect health, so we said thank you. So as we look now, the Bible said that Jesus sent with his disciples for the last time before he was crucified. He said, one will betray him. And the, the question came back, Lord, is it I? Betrayal is sin, but we have we've committed ourselves and we've confessed it, we've cast it out, we've been cleansed, and now we're in to the Holy of Holies. So Jesus then 
took the bread. He blessed it, broke it, said, eat all of it. This is my body. Let's eat together. Somebody tell him, thank you, Lord. He lifted the cup and gave thanks and said, all of you that were good of the cup, you show my suffering and death, and I shall come of you. This is the blood of the New Testament said with me. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Let's drink together. After supper, they sang a hymn. Went out to the Mount Olive. This is our vaccine. This is our healing. This is our perfect health. This is our holiness. This is the dominion. This is you. Somebody give me praise. Say, my God. Come on, let's stand in the gap for our nation for healing. We just took communion. God has already done it. Come on, just lift your voice in your car right there. Let me hear you, everybody, as loud as you can. church I was listening to a song it says has our God ever failed and the answer was a resounding no has he ever let you down the answer is a resounding no have you ever tried to depend on him and couldn't find him the answer is a resounding no right can he depend on you can he depend on you that's what I want to know I know I can depend on him. Can he depend on me? I want to be faithful in what he's asked me to do. And he's asked us to be faithful to in our giving. That's right. You know that uh, right down the road here, peace, as they say, there is a sanctuary that's going to be full of some praising, hand-waving, foot-stomping, shouting people. It's getting there, y'all. And I know that y'all want to all be there walking there and have that, that feeling inside of you that says God has blessed us in such a way that we could do this for him. Spread the gospel. Make the, make the kingdom even bigger than it is. Amen? All right. So in order to do that, if you want to give, you can text the word Faith Diamond, one word, to the number 77977. You can give that way. You can go to our website. If you're watching online, you can go to the website and give there. When you drive out of here today, the deacons will be out there at the, at the uh, gate, and you can give there. But in any way that you're going to do it, you give. Amen? Right. Amen? Right. All right. Raise your offering high in the air. Father God. I pray and confess your word over my finances. Today, I have given the whole tithe of my increase and a liberal offering. And I claim 
the windows of heaven's blessings over my life, over my family, over my finances. In Jesus' name, amen. And uh, Deaconess Douglas, why don't you come on up here? She got a special presentation, something she wants to say today.
If you're with them till the end, beep your horn. If you appreciate them not quitting, even when the devil told them they couldn't. If you thank God for 31 years, beep your horn. If you're happy there are pastors, beep your horn. If you wouldn't trade them for nothing, beep your horn. If you had 10,000 tongues, would you be able to thank God enough? If you're happy, they are pastors, beep your horn. That's it, y'all! <laughs>
Okay, so I don't know how y'all got how it, I love y'all so much. How did y'all do that without? Y'all don't know how nice it looks from up here. It's yeah, we just feel the love. Thank you so much for all of your hard work and all of your. I I don't know what to say. I'm I'm, I'm I don't know what to say. I'm just overjoyed. Thank you so much. We love y'all so much. So, so there's just one thing. There's one thing that I want to ask y'all to do. Just one thing that's really important. I want to ask y'all to do. Please get back in your car so we don't get in trouble. But we do want to see the signs of love. So when we're going out, please hold your signs so that we can just get a look. It looks wonderful from here, but I do want to see, we do want to see more clothes. Thank you so much. Love you guys. With we'll anything else, we'll let you know. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so Jesus. 
Somebody listening, Father, will come to you, Lord God, and make Jesus the Lord of their life, and we thank you in advance for that, Lord. But, Father, I can't close this prayer, this opening prayer before we declare your word. I can't close this prayer without thanking you for such lovely people as Trinity. They've been committed, Lord, and I just want to say thank you for the privilege of being able to say, I'm their pastor, I'm their bishop, co-pastor, Pastor O.J. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the love. Because of their sacrificial giving, Lord God, I pray increase over their lives, each and every one, over their lives, all that they need, all they stand in need of. And then some thank you, Father, for Trinity. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Man, y'all are too much. I say, y'all, y'all such loving folk. I thank y'all so much. Come on, let's make our confession. This is my Bible. 
my blood covenant in Jesus. This blood covenant is the word of faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. When I hear God's word this morning, I commit myself right now. I will put into practice all that I hear in Jesus' name. Amen. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down and told me to take another letter. And again, address this letter to the friend of the Church of Trinity. And the Holy Spirit has anointed me to share with you in this subject. Our subject this morning is what happens when you trust God? I want you to go back to our text. Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6, our foundational text. I also have a supporting text in Psalm 37. But let's start with Proverbs 3 verses 5 and 6. Very familiar. It teaches trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. All thy ways, verse 6 says, acknowledge him and he shall direct the path. Now the supporting text we want to use is in Psalm 37 verse 5, one verse and it teaches, commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And let me, let me share the Amplified version, it says, commit your way to the Lord, roll and repose each care your load on him, trust him, lean on him, rely on and be confident also in him and he shall bring it to pass we use for our subject of our meditation this morning what happens when you trust God now brothers and sisters let's understand that there are some benefits in trusting God now 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 allow me to start our lesson this morning with an even though statement. And even though it means despite the fact that, okay, okay, even though, and I, and I want to take my even though witness from Job. It is recorded that Job thought it was God, watch this, who brought all of the destruction upon his life. In, in, in Job 13, verse, chapter 13, verse 15, Job said, you remember, remember, he said what? Though he slay me, yet will I, what? Come on, trust in him. God gets the blame for what Job chapter 2 verse 7 clearly shows the slayer is Satan. For it says, so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job. But here, here is what we must do with our even though. Yes, for us here now, even though we know that God did not smite with this coronavirus, even though this pestilence is causing chaos, let's use our even though, even though we know it's not God, we're going to trust God in anyway. <laughs> Chapter 42 of Job verse 12 will tell you that and even though trust will give you double for your trouble. Glory to God. So if you ask from the words of our subject, what happens when you trust God? You have the evidence to say from Job, when you trust God, you can look for double blessings. Amen. So, 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 so number one, when you trust God, we're talking about the benefits. When you trust God, you do what? You're going to have what? Double for your trouble. Somebody said double for your trouble. Come on. I trust him, I have double for my trouble. All right, look, remember the homework. Y'all remember your homework? Did you do your homework? Okay, okay, just check it. All right, listen. Okay, homework. The answer to your homework, Proverbs 3, verse 8, remember? When asked 
what will happen when you trust God. You can answer from verse 8 of Proverbs 3. The Message Bible teaches us you can answer, run to God, run from evil, and your body will glow with health. Listen, it says, and your very bones will vibrate with light. Glory to God. Amen. That's what God said. Because and I, I wanted I wanted to get that verse in because the, the, because what we're going through in this coronavirus, I wanted to get it in because God is telling us that our health will be vibrant even though even though whatever comes upon us, He's gonna bless us right on through. Amen. So you see that trusting God defeats the coronavirus right there. Your body will glow with health. So when you trust God, sickness is defeated with good health. Your bones will vibrate with light. Glory to God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Now listen, okay, let's go back to Proverbs 3. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. You see, when you come to, when you come to trust, in this, the author of this text in Proverbs 3, he, listen, he was a chip off the old block. Yeah, yeah. His father uh, was a great example of trust. For we hear in our supporting text of trust from King Solomon's father, David. For David, the psalmist says, Psalm 37 and verse 5, he teaches, he says, Commit thy will unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. No wonder King Solomon says what, what trusting God will do. Trusting God is in his blood from his father, David. So we look here in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Our focus from our last lesson in trusting God, we said we would have confidence that what? That God cares for us. Remember that? Okay, okay. Now, we concluded also in our last lesson that there were two parts to this Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And that was our part was to do what? Our part was to trust and God's part was to do what? Guide us. Is that right? Amen? Okay, okay. So in trusting God, the first thing we said that we would do, we were going to be what? Confident in that God cares for us. Now look at the second thing here. The second of the day, we are to trust God to the point that we will be, here it is, David said in Psalm 37, we will be committed to his purpose for us. That's the important text. Committed our way unto God. So come on, let's make a confession. Come on, say, I'm confident in God and I'm committed to God's purpose. Amen. Yeah. So, 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 so God does have a purpose for our lives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. God, God has a plan for you to keep you, uh, to guide you, to prosper you, to bless you, to double increase you. Oh, He has a plan for you. But brothers and sisters, we must what? We must trust Him. Any, 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 any trusting folk here this morning? We trust God this morning. Amen. He's the one. He's the one gonna see us through, brother and sister. He's the one. He has it all. Listen, look, look, I found out you you can you know you can trust the person when you know they won't lie to you. If, if you look, when you you a person that lie to you, then they can't be trusted. But the Bible tells us that God cannot lie. We can trust him because he's nothing but the truth. Can it go and say, so help me God? Amen. So look, watch this. Watch this. Proverbs 3, verse 6. It says, in all thy ways, don't miss this, acknowledge him. Recognize his presence. Acknowledge him. Here it is. Act no ledge. Act like you know that it all comes from him. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. But the emphasis here, watch this. The emphasis here, uh, uh, it, it says, that in, in all our ways. That means 
in our financial ways of life, in our social ways of life, in our recreational ways of life, in our vocational ways of life, in our marital ways of life, all our ways, in all, all our ways, we ought to do what? Acknowledge Him. Praise Him first. And let it be known. Oh, yeah, we thank God for doctors, we thank God for nurses, we thank God for scientists, we thank God for everybody that's helping us out, but we acknowledge that nobody but the Lord is going to bless us and get us what we're going through. And Jesus, who made it, died on that cross, got up on that Thursday morning, and he took us right out of anything the devil will bring our way. Glory to God. Yeah, now, watch this. The word acknowledge literally means to recognize or to see. Simply put, in every part of our life, we are to be looking for God. In every decision that we make, we are to acknowledge God. What, listen, here it is, here it is, watch this. What God wants us to do is turn our lives into a contract and leave it blank. That we sign on the bottom, bottom, bottom line and then allow him to fill in the blanks, fill in the details. Give it all to him. Don't miss this. Don't miss this. All in these verses, God wants all of our heart. God wants to acknowledge, be acknowledged in all of our ways. Listen, brothers and sisters, if we trust God for everything, he will guide us in everything. So if I'm going to trust God completely, number one, I'm going to be confident that God cares for me. Secondly, I'm going to be committed to God's purpose for my life. And let's close with this one. Here we go. Here we go. I will be controlled, confident, committed, and now controlled by God's will for my life. So then, if we will do our part, God will do his part. And remember again, our part is to what? Trust. And his part is to do what? God, right? Okay, okay, okay. God cannot guide me if I'm not trusting him. All right. Simple, simple. I said it before. Simple example. Watch this. The first time I used the GPS system, here's what I did. I put in where I needed to go. I watched the screen, I listened to the voice. As I travel along the way, I, and I, I see the screen and hear, hear the voice, but listen, as I look out at where I was going, look, it didn't look like the GPS was telling me right. So I decided uh, to turn left instead of turning right like the GPS said. Amen. Okay, okay, okay. Anybody ever done that before? But see, y'all want to try to play me now. Come on. Come on, tell the truth. It didn't look like you were going the right way, so you, this thing ain't right. Come on. Okay. As soon as I did, as soon as I went the, the, the way they told me how to go, GPS said, it was one of the old ones, y'all. Recalculating, recalculating. Go down 100 feet. Make a U-turn. I kept going straight because it didn't look like a U-turn was going to help me. The voice in the GPS said again, recalculating, recalculating, go 200 feet, turn left, then go right to right street and turn right. I kept going straight. All along, I'm just as lost as I can be in my mind. So what I do? I'm lost. So I'm pointing to the service station and I start praying, Lord, I'm lost. And while I'm praying, God said the words, trust it to take control. Then he, then he put in my mind, why did you get the GPS system if you weren't going to trust it anyway? So I did just that. And even, listen, even when it didn't look like I was going the right way, I trusted the control of what the GPS said, and well, what do you know? I ended up where I needed to be because I allowed the GPS to take control. Brothers and sisters, listen, God said acknowledge him. Nobody else, nothing else, acknowledge him in all our ways. Listen, let him take the steering wheel of our lives. Amen.
And here's the last part we let you go. Last, the last of verse 6. Watch this. Chapter 3, Proverbs 3, three verse 6. Listen. Here, here, here's the benefit. In trusting God. Last one. So what happens when we trust God? Number one, what do we say? We're going to get double blessings, right? Amen. Secondly, our health is going to grow if we trust God. Then we said, just now we said, what happened? He's going to guide us. But here's the last one. Look, he's going to straighten everything out in your life. Glory to God. Look, <laughs> look, look at the last part. Oh, chapter, verse, verse three, chapter 3, verse 6. Look, look. When the word says God will direct our path, the interpretation is he will make your path straight. Listen. The word direct is a word that literally means, here it is, to cut a highway or to clear a path. Oh, Jesus. Well, mm, mm, mm. let me tell you what that means. Yeah. When you trust God to lead you, God will get out in front of you. Trust God to lead you. God will clear every obstacle that gets in your way. Can I get a witness in here? When you trust God to lead you, mountains, they will be moved. When you trust God to lead you, valleys will be raised. When you trust God to lead you, crooked places will be made straight. When you trust God to lead you, rough places will be made smooth. When you trust God to lead you, doors will be open. When you trust God to lead you, problems will be solved. Questions will be answered. When you trust God to lead you, will be won when you trust God to lead you defeat will be the victory is there anybody here who can say I trust in the Lord with all my heart I need not to my own understanding and all my ways I bless your life in every way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen. Do you receive that this morning? Let me hear you. Do you receive that this morning? Lead here. No matter what we see, no matter what we hear, come in our way to be this trust. I'm going to trust God. Put it in his hands. He's going to bless you right on through it. I want to leave you with this. To those that are listening, the only way that you're going to be, you're going to make it through this as to what we talked today is to know Jesus as your personal Savior. And it's very simple, a very simple way to do it. The Bible teaches us if we turn from our sin and turn to God. Remember, we read the scripture said, run to God, turn from, run from evil. That's sin. Run, turn, turn to God. And all you need to do is say these simple words. Speak. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart. 
that God raised Jesus from the dead. The Bible said that I shall be saved right here, right now. I, I can't take for granted that you hear what I'm saying, know what I'm saying. I want you to pray this prayer right now, right where y'all say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come. I turn from sin, Lord God. I turn to you, your son Jesus. I confess with my mouth, your son Jesus. I believe in my heart that you did raise your son Jesus from the dead. Now, Father, you said in your word that I'll be saved. So thank you, Father, for saving me. Thank you, Father, for write my name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Thank you, Father, for blessing me in Jesus' name. You said that prayer. You gave your life to the Lord. Welcome to the family of believers in Christ Jesus. Welcome. We thank God for you. Welcome to the family. Trust him, man. Put it all in his hands. You don't have to worry. God got it. Jesus name. God bless you. Come on, let's pray. Father, we come in the precious name of Jesus. We leave each other, Lord God, but we do not leave your presence and you're with us. And because we're with us, we stay together, Lord God, and we pray a continued blessing. Father, I pray personal continued blessing upon all that are here, all that hear my voice. And hear your word this morning, Father. Thank you, Father, for blessing them in every way. Father, we lift you up and give you praise, and we thank you, Lord God, that we give it all to you, and we bless your name. In the precious name of Jesus is our prayer of thanksgiving and praise. And may God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit walk with you, let him keep you, to keep you in peace, his calendar upon you, he'll be with you every step of the way. In the precious name of Jesus is our prayer. Father, who we said amen. God bless you. Peace, power, much love. We love you. Walk by faith and God bless you. See you Wednesday night. Bible study. Come in. Come in. God bless you. We love you.
I love it, I love it. Gotta hold it. Gotta hold it. See y'all later. Love y'all.
miss you. Great workout when I'm tired now. I'm still um, great workout when I'm still I'm still tired. <laughs> DNA. Bobber.
Before you turn it into a real dog. It is a real dog. He's cute. You know if I want cam video and peaches will be out here too. I thought about that the first Sunday. Where did the batteries go? <laughs> on that PhD. Wait on that PhD. <laughs> PhD. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Tick tock. <laughs> Doc, let's go. Tick tock, Doc. I need to finish it too fast. Give me three. You got a year. Let's go. I got a year. Tick tock. The end there takes three years. Come on now. No pressure. <laughs> Love y'all. 
love y'all so much. How y'all doing? You got them. There you go. Let's go. 